Good morning, chaps and chapesses. Can you hear me? Okay. You know, <laughs> I remember at school, and I always say, I went to St. John's School. I used to call it St. John's School for the Totally Bewildered. And you know, <laughs> they pulled it down the other week. They did about, about five, six weeks ago. That school in Sessions Road with the playground on the roof. Remember that? There's a few of them. I tell the kids in the States now, and they won't believe me. You mean they had a playground on a roof? And I say, oh, yeah. yeah. I said, and they used to see depressed kids in the third year taking a jump at playtime. <laughs> <laughs> but I, <laughs> I remember in that school, there was a teacher, and they had one of them eyes, you know, like uh, the guy in the, the Laurel and Hardy pictures, well, Jimmy Findlayson, he was like that. And he used to, when we were sitting in class, he'd go, you, and he'd point like that. And I'd look up at the ceiling, you see, you, and I'd go, and he'd say, come here. And he'd look at me like that with that eye. And I, <laughs> I looked at him like that. The other and he said, Ma, you're a bold creature. And what he said to me, he used to say, You, boy, will end upon the gallows. Where will you end? And I had to say, On the gallows, sir. <laughs> I remember, sir, about five years ago, I was doing a lecture in San Antonio, Texas. And I... I told this story to these librarians you boy will end on the gallows I said and look at me now and a big Texan libraries lady shouted out from the crowd there's still plenty of time Mr. Jacquez <laughs> <laughs> that's what they call me over there Mr. Jacquez Mr. Jack and it, <laughs> I'm down near the Mexican border guess who I am there Mr. Hackett I like that. Meet the hacker, yeah. Well, I never thought that I'd be an author. I mean, who does? To me, authors were dead people, you know, and they all had names that began with Sir. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, you know, uh, Sir Walter Scott. They all had names like this. And I should imagine, I thought, no, they, they wouldn't have an author just called Brian Jakes. Brian who? <laughs> Anyhow, the thing was that I loved to write. I could always read, I could always write. I left school at 15 and just went on my own, or, you know, doing anything, anything and everything. Jack of all trades, master of none. Now, children ask me constantly questions about writing. And do you know one of the big ones? Especially, I've just been on a, a lecture tour in America now, and they'll say, um, Mr. Jacquez, when did you decide to become a writer? And there's no answer to that, is there? It's like saying, when did you first decide to become a kid? But you've got to give them an answer. So I always say, ah, yes. I can remember the very day. I can remember leaping out of bed that morning. Ha ha! I think I shall be an author. And I will off and off and off and off. Doesn't work like that. You know what the question should have been, don't you? How? How do you become an author? That's the question. And I always say to kids, well, I can tell you how to become an author. I can tell you in one sentence, because I knew how to write. I don't know why. It's a God-given gift, isn't it? But I had this gift to write, and I can tell you how. And think of this if you're a kid and you'd like to be an author. Think of this. You can be an author if you can learn to paint pictures with 
words. Now that's all you have to do. Paint pictures with words. If you think about that, that's what makes an author. <clears throat> because as I say to children, the man who does the picture on the front, he's the artist. He uses paints, colors, brushes, acrylics, palettes. The man who does the inside is the author and he paints his picture with words. And that's what I try and do. And I think there must be millions, countless millions of would-be authors who have wardrobes full of deathless prose. And do you know what the trouble was? They wrote it for themselves. They never considered their audience. They wrote it for themselves. Now, I was published before Red War. In fact, <coughs> one or two of you here might possibly have an early Jake's <laughs> in one of your cupboards at home. Do you remember them little poetry books I used to do? Get Your Whack was the first one. Get Your Whack, yeah? I never made any money off it, but it was voted the most stolen book by students from the university bookshop. So that was something, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, it came about through the good offices of a, a, a wonderful man called Reg Brooks, who was a producer for Radio Merseyside. He gave me my chance. And suddenly, I found myself working for the BBC. It's not nice, the BBC. And do you know what BBC stands for? British Broad Corping Castration, right. And <laughs> so, <clears throat> I was introduced to the children of the Royal Waverley School for the Blind. So I thought, now I've got a little bit of success here. I was doing a bit of the everyman, I was doing a bit on radio, I was doing stand-up comic in clubs and everything. So I thought, I've got a little bit of success here. You've got to start putting something back, haven't you? So, I used to deliver the milk of a morning to the school for the blind. And I used to fetch them, the, you know, remember the little school cartons? Them, the little triangular school cartons and orange juice. And I'd often pass a few to the kids. But it was very early morning. And uh, the house mother used to get me, all, you know, shut them windows. And it came that about, oh, about two years after that, I was invited to their Christmas party. And there were these wonderful, a big family of gangsters up the back of Wood Street who had this nice nightclub. And they gave it over to the kids, you know, they had a great time. I went along, so I decided to do something for these kids. Now, I used to go up and I used to interact with the children, play with them, you know, and uh, knock them about. Do you know, the one thing a blind kid hates is having people lead them around by the hand. Come on now, now be careful now, there's two stairs there, you're going to bump into that wall, they don't want that. They want to bump into the wall, they want to trip down two stairs, they want to be kids like everyone else. And they used to approach me and they always used to say my name twice, Brian Jakes, Brian Jakes. I'd say, what is, I can do Kung Fu. I'd say, well, you're not going to do it on me, so there. <laughs> and we had a great time. So I would read them stories, you see. And sometimes we get books that the publishers had sent in to read to them. And do you know something? I didn't like some of them books. I took a look through children's books and I didn't like some of them. And do you know why? Because they were dealing with now. About this mess we're living in the middle of. The modern age. And these stories were about technological progress and the rise of computers and Teenage angst and, and I thought, oh, what happened to the magic? 